hello hello and welcome to another video so we're gonna have a little conversation this morning Kennedy is still sleeping so I do have some time I'm just gonna take my time okay everything's plugged up hopefully all these mics are charged and all that kind of good stuff I'm just we're gonna slow this down we're gonna take our time on today okay um, we're gonna talk about relationships and we're gonna talk about ruining relationships and some of the ways in which we ruin relationships unintentionally. Some of y'all would be intentional. And I'm going to say this in another video for that person who is intentionally ruining relationships. And I would say that the person who is intentionally ruining relationships, um, you haven't come to the realization that life is compiled of how you deal with relationships whether it be friendships whether it be business partnerships whether it be romantic relationships that's what life is relationships with your children relationships with your parents it's a relationship and the worst thing that you can do is not learn how to not be well versed in relationships not be well versed in the you that shows up in these relationships. And I want to talk about a few things today. I pray that this really like, girl, jogs your mind to really getting yourself together. I was totally troubled last night. I wanted to make this video last night, really, but I didn't have, I didn't have the notes and I really just had to sit. I, I was so annoyed by what I saw last night. Primary, this is why I don't really watch. I don't watch YouTube like that. I don't watch TV like that. I just don't because some of the foolishness that's going around, it's just... It's just that it's foolishness and it's hard to see people who are leading people astray climb to the top and lead the masses astray and I'm going to go into the first thing I have some notes down here so excuse me if I do look down I want to talk about this one um, like I said life is compiled of relationships so if, if you don't want to get relationships together you're gonna to have a hard time in life in life okay um, I want to talk about this first thing, and that is letting, and I'm speaking to the women, so forgive me if a man is watching, it's probably not going to be directed towards you, because my goal is to speak to the women. I pray that a man, okay, a man girds up his loin, all right, girds up his loin, and allows God to really mold him to where he can speak to other men, but I am not a man, so let me speak to the women. Stop letting other women and other people convince you that you don't want something that you actually do desire. There is nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong, wrong with desiring a husband. There's nothing wrong with desiring children. And let me take this off because that glare is kind of annoying. Let me t let me say this. Um, I told this to my husband, and I'm sure my husband he could probably get sick of my little rants because I'm getting so mad at some of the stuff I be saying. So. This is how crazy it is to tell a woman to not desire children. We have wombs, okay? And yes, there are certain situations where women simply don't want children. But I find it to be, because I was this woman who I didn't want any more children, it to be because of a traumatizing situation. Rather it be that be you grew up in a house and you don't dare want to bring a child into this world because you don't want a child to experience not even a little bit of what you went through. That's trauma. That's not a normal response to that's not a normal response to a situation It's to avoid it altogether to say, I'll never put myself in this space. So I'll never put another child in this space. That's not normal. OK, so we're not we're not building lives off of this response because it's not normal. We need to address why it is that we feel that way, why it is that that's our that that's our thought process. And I'm going to get to some things that will help you with that. But I want to let you know that that's not a normal thought process. Um, and most women who don't want children, they don't want children because of some sort of traumatic background surrounding children. Rather it is, rather it is you like myself and you had a child very young and you saw how bad that went and how nobody was there and all these other things. You can let that build your lens as to how you're going to go through life, how you're going to view men. OK, we were both teenagers. When you grow up and you see, no, it wasn't just your fault. It wasn't just my fault. We were both silly. We were both teenagers. We we're both children. Somebody should have been watching after us both, okay? But I could have let that experience build how I see men, and therefore I could have never gotten married. I could have never gotten married. And like I said, let me go back to 
think about this and I want you to think about this. I thought about this last night. The Holy Spirit brought this to my attention to tell a woman who has a womb not to desire children is goes completely against her wiring. You have a womb and you have a cycle every month. Prayerfully, it's every month. If it's not every month, you need to go watch some of my other videos. And we really need to see why is it what? What is it in the bloodline? What is it in life that has disrupt, disrupted the natural flow of life? Because not having a cycle, having a cycle that's too heavy, having a cycle that's disruptive to life is a disruption and it needs to be disrupted. But we have cycles every month and we're reminded of this womb. We're reminded of the fact that this womb actually can be filled, needs to be filled. You know, we're, we're reminded that it's there. So to tell a woman who has a womb and who is reminded of that womb to not desire children is counter the woman. And you'll hear women saying this, women preaching this message. But and it sounds like to you, it sounds like this woman is pro women. But to tell me to go against my very being is really you're anti me. You're telling me to destroy the very core of who I am. I get it. We've made like being a mother is not easy. Being a mother, I would I would go off to say it's really not even that fun. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. But there is this innate desire in the inside of every woman with a womb. So a real woman, not the woman that you guys are out here making. That desires to have that. And with that being said, because the woman desires children, the woman desires a man. Because the only way that this womb can be filled, and this was by divine design, the only way that this womb can be filled is if a man fills it. Is it hard to get along with men? Sure. Is it hard to find the right man? It might. Yeah. I won't go. I won't tell you that it's not hard to find the right man. It's also hard to become the right woman. It's all hard. It's all challenging. It's all challenging. But let's stop pretending like we don't want it. And then turning and going on this side over here that sounds like it's feminine feminism at its core is really anti women because you're trying to take out the part of a woman's life that gives her the things that she really desires. Like I just said, like a man. And we're not building. We're not going to be stupid. We see that that doesn't work. A lot of you guys don't want to follow biblical principles, but you see that a woman in a household by herself, a single woman. That's not the best environment for children. And if you can't see that, I say it, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Go take a job as a substitute teacher and you'll see that crap don't work. Does it need to be a strong man in the home? Absolutely. He don't need to be just doing whatever and however, but you also as a woman don't need to be doing however and whatever to get this man. There's a protocol that you need to follow. There is a protocol that you need to follow. And I'm telling you this coming from Ratchetville. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not sitting here saying this because I don't under. And I'm not sitting here saying this in a way that I don't understand how hard it is to actually attain these things. But the hard work is work that you're going to have to do anyway to get to any of these other things that you say that you want in life. But what the one thing that I want you to stop doing is saying you don't want something that you actually do want. You might not know how the you that exists right now can get to the thing that you want, but stop saying you don't want it. And I see these women, like I said, you're my age, maybe you're a little older, maybe you're in your forties and you're still screaming about how you don't want a man, how men ain't crap. So then you start toying around with women and then you holler about you still want kids. Well, in divine design, the Lord didn't create it to where a, you two women can get together and produce any kids. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I need to um, settle the matter that I have with men so that I can get the man that I want, that I need to bring about this thing in my life that I truly do desire. Instead of building up defenses 
that push away my very heart, my heart's very desire. There's nothing wrong with wanting children. There's nothing wrong with wanting a husband. I'm telling you, I cannot work as hard as my husband and I'm a hard worker. I can put a lot of things together and more than one time I can juggle it all. But the, but the stability needed to really build a home. And I don't mean a home as in like a house. I mean a home as like a family. Inside of my being, I don't have that. I don't find joy in waking up early in the morning and going to work to provide for my family. And most women do not. Most women who are resting as a woman... People like to say feminine energy. I don't like to use all those terminology because you guys start running to the left with them. But you're resting as a woman. You don't want to do all that. The two of those, they don't even exist. One of those are very masculine trait and the other one is not. Okay. So the first thing before I get started, stop following people who, 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 Push you in this space of keep saying that you don't want something that you actually want. Girl, you want your career. You want all that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. But let's talk about what you really want. And then at the end of that, you know, one day I do want children. One day I would like to get married. Stop that nonsense because you think it sounds good. Like at the end of the day, the only person who's going to be missing out is you. And I'll tell you right now, baby, once you get, once you get 60, 70 years old, you excited to see those children come back with the with your grandchildren. And imagine spending your whole life lying to yourself, talking about you don't want something that you actually do desire. And then you have none of it. And you used to be able to put, you know, people in nursing homes. Baby, even that ain't what it used to be. There's, it's very hard to find good people anywhere. But you spend your whole life talking about what you don't want and you actually have a real desire for it. Stop that. Stop it and stop following people who make you, who push you into that space. The bitter women's crew is never a place that you want to be. I say, I tell you guys it all the time. Stay away from the, the, <laughs> stay away from the miserably, the miserably married and the happily divorced. Stay away from them because there's nothing happy about being divorced. There's nothing happy about separation. There's nothing happy. There's nothing that brings you joy about knowing, you know, when I started off this journey and I had these children, our goal was this and it ended abruptly. There's nothing exciting about that. So stop lying to people and stop listening to the lies that they're excited about that. No, it ended in a way that I didn't think that it would end. And Lord, since you're the only one, help me to pick up these pieces. And move forward to the thing that I desire. Let's start off with that. Okay. Let's move to the next thing. The next thing I have is to have your own standards. It's important to go into situations. Whether it be business or otherwise. With your own standards. If you don't have your own standards. When you enter into an environment. You're entering into the environment. With someone else's vision. For how this should go. So what I want you to do. Is begin to get your own vision of how this should go. Now, if you're like me, your vision includes God's vision. I don't want this thing to go the way that I think it should go. I'm not that smart. Lord, what is it? What The way that you've designed me, what did you intend for me to do with that? He'll gladly answer that for you. Once you lay aside all these asks, all these requests that you have of, I want this. How do I get this that I want? And say, Lord, you designed me this way. What was your intention for this design and move toward that man? He's going to blow your mind. He's going to blow your mind. But I want you to have your own standards. So like I said, when you go into have your own standards, have your own vision for your life. So when you go into these situations, you're going into it open minded in the sense of you're ready to see how God is going to work this thing out. But you have a vision. So you're not just falling for anything. You're not getting into relationships and you, girl, you ain't got no standards. You just, whatever the man says, that's what you want. You get a new job, whatever they say, whatever the boss says is what you do. You have no vision for where you want to go with that. That's dangerous. And I want you to not do that. 
And the next thing I have is to develop yourself. Develop yourself. Setting your own standards um, is a part of developing yourself. You learn how to set your standards when you are developing yourself. I made a video for you guys about things to do um, instead of waiting for a man, okay? Um, like instead of just begging God for a man, there are things that you can, you should do. I'm not saying that you shouldn't want a man. I just gave you a whole talk, excuse me, at the beginning of this video. If that's something that you want, stop saying that you don't want it, right? But there are things that you can do in the waiting. You can, you know, learn how to make money, learn how to spend money. I list a few things in that video. Learn how to make money, learn how to spend money, learn how to be with just you, like develop yourself. Learn, learn how you behave in environments. Learn... You know, what happened to me back there when I was like 10 years old? Some of that stuff is still playing in the 30-year-old that you see right here. Learn yourself. Develop yourself. How do I show up in the workspace? Learn yourself. Develop yourself. Okay? Stop waiting for everybody else to do everything for you and develop yourself. Learn new skills. Um, I'm not saying they have to all be degrees and things like that, but learn new skills. You want, you know, learn how to ride. Learn how to speak to people. Le just learn new things. Develop you. Those gifts, when you ask God, like, hey, what, you made me like this. What What did you, instead of putting labels on, talking about like ADHD and all this kind of good stuff, you made me this way. What was your intention for this design? And begin to develop the skills um, that really bring out those your attributes. You know what I mean? Develop yourself. It's really develop yourself. Girl, when I tell you, just develop yourself. I'm not going to make this video all about me. Develop yourself. It's going to work so good for you. Develop yourself. Okay, let's move on to the next. I also want to say this. I don't know what kind of video this is. Okay, it's supposed to be about ruining relationships. Um, sometimes the relationship shouldn't even begin. But let me say this, um, and I'm not picking on anyone. That's not never my goal. I would never. Would, I would never. Um, but I want to say this. Build your confidence, okay? You know what that's going to take. You know the areas that you're not confident. And I want to talk about weight here because I find that a lot of women who stroke, a lot of women struggle in this area, period. But a lot of women who struggle in this area, tend to accept less than because they're struggling in this area. So you think that because you look a certain way, you deserve a certain level of treatment, or perhaps you couldn't get a certain thing because of the way that you look. If that is your thought process, what I want you to do, if you feel that you need to lose weight, what I want you to do is lose weight. So we can get rid of that barricade that keeps you saying, I deserve to be treated like this because I'm this size. Let's handle the size then before we delve into relationships and, and possibly ruin good partnerships. Rather, like I said, it be business or otherwise or marriage or platonic or otherwise because of this area in our life that we're insecure. Let's let's build our self-confidence. What is it? What will it take for you to be more confident? Like I said, I only mention weight because I know a lot of women struggle with weight. I was one of those women. OK, I know a lot of women struggle with weight and I have never been. I have never been. I'm a small girl in my eyes. I've never been a small girl. I'm five, three. So when I think back about it on it, I'm like, girl, that's not that tall. That's. But where did you get the idea from? Because I'm not I'm not um, thin. You know what I mean? Like I have a, you know, you probably can't tell from the camera and maybe, maybe it's just, you know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm the person I always give the heavyweight, the, the boxer, there's like the lightweight division, the middleweight and the heavyweight. And yeah, there are other weights, but we just talking about these three. I'm in the middle weight, but I could get enough muscle on my body to be a heavyweight. I could never be a lightweight. So I said that to say a lot of times we struggle with weight. We struggle with how we appear. And I want you to know that that has no bearing on the type of marriage that you will get into and really the type of relationship that you deserve. But a lot of women think that it does. So if you're one of those women who think that it does, I want you to address that area of your life before you delve in relationships. Because what you'll do when you lack confidence is you'll always choose someone who doesn't quite add up because you think that's all you'll get. And that's a lot of from the pits of hell and we're not going with that 
Okay, so I did want to mention that. Let's move on to the next thing. This is another one, and maybe some of you suffer. Maybe you're suffering still, and uh, this is water. So I'm going to sit here and talk about this. Um, stay sober. Now, the Bible tells us to stay sober-minded, and to be of a sober mind means to be of a sober mind. Your judgment isn't clouded, and there are a lot of ways that you can go about. I'm talking about some of them here. I just mentioned one. There's a lot of ways that you can go through life without clouded judgment, right? And I think one of the things is not being so desperate, but how do you how do you step out of the place of desperation where you actually acquire some of the things that you need? That's how you're, that's how I can walk into, you know, a, a job interview or something. Baby, I don't need your job. I don't need you. That's why I'm, you see why I'm making this video right now? You think YouTube paying me. You think YouTube paying me something, right? And I do make a little bit of money from YouTube, but I'll tell you, it's nothing like, like, I can come on here and say what I need to say, what needs to be said, because I am not desperate for the algorithm to like me. I'm not desperate for people to like me. Desperation is not a good place for you to be. I want you to be sober minded and desperation does not give you a sober mind. Okay. In no instance, I just use the algorithm as, um, you know, but I want to say this, be sober as in if somebody invites you somewhere, you know, you go out to dinner, maybe you went out to a, you're, you know, you're with your, um, co-workers and y'all going out first of all i wouldn't agree to go out with co-workers and be drinking and carrying on because that's a part of being a sober mind girl people do some of the craziest things when they're drinking and i will tell you i don't drink i don't drink anymore i've had enough experiences i told you guys about one when i went on a cruise um i, I got invited to a wedding one time girl i had like two drinks and i didn't have any food that day i think i, I had a piece of fish that they had at the wedding girl and i had like just alcohol neat which means it doesn't have anything in it it's just the alcohol and I think I had like two or three shots and I don't remember very much about that event that's not a good place to be you don't want to be being invited to things and just being in, in spaces and you don't recall what's going on that is how you ruin relationships I want to tell you that there's actually a few stories in the bible I I have one for you guys on my website with David and Abigail. So how David and Abigail came to um, be married. Um, but her husband almost lost his life. He he actually did end up dying, but he almost lost his life before he actually died um, because he was in it and he was in a drunken stupor. So there are, pre there are a few times in the Bible where you see people in drunken stupors and they're just doing stuff that's completely outlandish. OK, and if you've ever been you know, in a drunken stupor before, not, not sober, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You think it's a good time and people, perhaps that was like your next business deal. Perhaps that was your next engagement. Like you don't know what it was and you were out here acting like a plum fool in front of these people. Be sober. And I'm not telling you don't drink. I'm telling you don't get drunk because that's what the word says not to get drunk. I don't drink at all because I've just haven't found to where one drink don't lead to two drinks, lead to three drinks, lead to what is going on. Okay. What is going on up in here? What's going on tonight? So I personally don't do it anymore. But if you are drinking, like do me a favor and have that glass of wine at your house. Okay. And I, I, I honestly know that you'll come to a place where you realize, why am I doing this? Why am I sitting here doing this? And that's a beautiful place to be because that's a part of you um, developing yourself, understanding why you're doing certain things. If it has no benefit, if it's not that big of a deal, why am I doing it? I understand that you can't push anyone into that place, but it is a part of developing yourself. But don't you be going out with people. Girl, I wish I would go out with some coworkers, talking about drinking, telling these people all your business and wondering why you look at the schedule and now you only got two days. Okay? Because they know the real you coming out here and we don't not that you don't want people to know the real you but you, control yourself have some self-control have some self-discipline so let's move on to the next one this is the next one that i have stop sleeping with everybody stop sleeping with everybody some of you are single women and good men good men tours men who were mentors have come into your child's life and you have decided to sleep with them and then you go on and telling your son how all men are no good and then you wonder why your son too becomes one of the no good men that you so quickly tell him about every day it's not a mystery as to why it happens it might be a mystery to you but it's not a mystery stop sleeping with everybody you know my motto which is 
the Bible's motto, which is, if you're not married, you don't need to be sleeping with these people anyway. But I know some of you fail to get that through your thick head. Stop sleeping with everybody. You're ruining good relationships. It might be friendships. It might be it might be the friendship that's going to take you to the next level of growth in your life. It might be a business relationship that'll take you to the next, you know, your next financial breakthrough, your next financial season. Um, and you're sleeping with the person and you've halted that growth. I want you to stop doing that. OK, like I said, you might have children who very well need mentors, who need people to teach them stuff that's outside of even your capacity. And they can't get the mentor because you want the man and you keep sleeping with everybody. Stop that. OK, you're ruining relationships. Thought I put that in there. Let's move to the next thing. All right. So here's the next one. And that is stop being so friendly at work. And I'm sitting in front of you. I'm a pretty friend, pretty friendly person. And this was definitely an area that I had to. Um, get some development in every time you come into a room and people think that you're so nice and you're so friendly that doesn't mean it's your time to act like their friend you're still at work and just know that friends don't always get the promotions and I don't mean promotion just in the sense of like moving up I just mean promoted okay um even even when the Lord promotes you, like in the spirit, you're promoted. There's a certain disposition that you even have to come about because you better believe if the Lord gives you a word to tell someone, um, sometimes you being friendly will stop your ability to be able to deliver this word in the way, in the urgent way that he's told you to deliver it to them. So don't find it so necessary. Like, okay, have friends, have business. Have friends have business. Don't try to mix friends and business all in together. It never works. Trust me. Like I said, take it from me. I used to be that person. Baby, I'm coming in here and it's business. Okay? If you... I'm coming here in this business. And another thing is like coming in late to spaces. When you come in late to spaces, I feel like it already discredits you. And a lot of times the way you show up ruins the relationships altogether. Like whether it be your appearance, like I'm not the girl. You know I be having color braids in my hair. I'm not saying you have to stick to any mold, but keeping it neat. You know what I mean? Looking like you didn't just roll out of bed, coming into places with pajama pants on and things of that nature. Don't ruin relationships, bonnets and, and things of and things of that nature. Um, don't ruin relationships. Don't ruin don't ruin good things for yourself. They're looking at you for a promotion. You roll up in here with a bonnet in your head. Girl, they can't take wh- where can we take you? Where can we take you? And I don't want that to be you. Like I said, I don't want you to to place a halt on your financial seasons and just your growth in life in general. You can't we can't take you everywhere with you acting like that. You always popping off at the mouth. We can't take you. I told you the Lord told me you're not coming with me acting like that. You're not coming with me with unforgiveness. You're not coming with me behaving like that. And some of y'all, that's how your bosses think about you. You're not coming with me acting like that. And they won't tell you because you're a great worker, you're a great person, you're nice and you're friendly. But there's a way that you're acting that you're not going anywhere else. And then you're frustrated. Why does everyone else always get the growth? Why does everyone else always get the promotion and I don't? Because you're acting like that. Okay? And with that same thing, I want to say that some people are like, well, that's why I don't want a job. Hmm, I got you. <laughs> that's why I'm going to my job. That's why I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Let me tell you. The same problem, if you have the same, that problem at work, you have the same problem in entrepreneurship. Let me tell you this, that because I come on this camera, I guess I'm, I am friendly in real life. I won't, I won't, I'm not going to hold you. Um, I'm not a mean person, um, but I am able to discern what not to do and what not to say. Okay. I didn't always lean into that discernment, but I know better. So I'll have people reaching out to me via emails, one to hold full conversation, reaching out to me via Instagram, one to hold full conversation. How my day is going is none of your business. We're not friends. And a lot of people, I know that kind of sounds rude, but it's either business or you're trying to be a friend of mine. And it's really you just trying to get information. And I don't need you to get information. I've had people in my email trying to give me advice. I'm not here on YouTube to get advice. I'm not here to get business advice from you. I'm not here for you to see if I have a website set up. And, you know, if if the address that I use when I ship out packages is my personal address. Like, no, it's not my personal address. Who you think? You know what I mean? Like some and some people look for those loopholes in people because they think since you're friendly, you don't know anything. And I'm telling you, a lot of time you're the person that sets that up. OK, so stop being so friendly. Just learn to discern. Sit with the Holy Spirit, sit with the Lord and learn to discern. OK, because people out here. 
don't I don't want you ruining your relationships. Okay? We ain't talking to everybody like that. And another thing is the last thing I have is ministry. Um and this is this is my work, right? Sometimes and I this used to be me, so I can only say it if it used to be me, right? Um you're supposed to be doing ministerial work and you're becoming friends with a very demon that you're supposed to be casting out. And let me take that out of Spookyville and bring that here to real life. Let's say the person who you become friends with is um, an alcoholic and they're not they're not open in saying they're alcoholic. They just drink every day after work. And then you knowing this, you say, you know what? I'm having a hard day at work as well. I want to come with y'all. And all of a sudden you start participating in the drinking that they're doing every day after work. Okay. This is you becoming friends with the very demon that you were supposed to be casting out. So you were there to be the change and you became a part of the problem. I want to use this story um, because I think it's a good picture. Remember um, Jesus at the well with the woman, right? Jesus was a man and he was fully God and fully man. So I'm just going to assume, and I'm not being disrespectful, Holy Spirit. Um, I want to just paint this picture for you though. Jesus was at the well and this woman was a prostitute. So Jesus being fully God and fully man at that time, what if he would have taken the time to step into his fully man suit? Okay. And do what people do to prostitutes but no he stepped into himself being God as well and did the work that his father sent him to do and he told the woman about herself and a lot of times you were called into spaces to tell people about themselves and you became their friends and that's a dangerous space to be because you'll be held accountable for what the Lord told you to deliver to those people okay I hope I hope that was clear I hope that was clear that's all I wanted to talk to you about this morning Ruining relationships. We're going into a new season. You're going to need some good connections. And I don't want you going through life without the right connections, without the godly connections, without what it is that you need to be successful. Um, And I dang sure, I dang sure don't want you to keep letting people convince you that you don't want something that you actually do desire. Okay. As always, if you have a question, ask a question and I'll see you in the next video.